Hello everybody, my name is Maya and I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers and we are talking about a very fun topic. Money, shmoney, the bag, the racks. You know that, mm, I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about that last one actually, now that I think about it. But no, we're talking about shmoney and we are talking about what to do once you get that six figure job one of the best benefits about a career in tech is the money it often brings with it many software engineers data scientists people in cybersecurity, they will get to that six figure mark sometime in their early to mid careers and so okay what do we do once we have that now keep in mind i am not here to tell you what you should and should not do with your money it's your money and i'm a finance grad because i know the importance of money and how personal that is to people and to me so this is simply just some insight into just things to consider when trying to figure out how to maximize on this very new gorgeous luxurious sexy perk of yours you know you know so yeah let's get right into it Now, the very first thing that to me, to be honest, I know I just gave that spiel back there. Like, I'm not going to tell you what you should and should not do with your money. I know I just- I am not here to tell you what you should and should not do with your money. This one, I don't care if you're mad at me. I will tell you to do this. Reward yourself. What you just did is insane. That is an amazing thing. The work you put in and the sleepless nights and the anxiety and the stress and the fear of it all, of interviewing and promotions, you did that. And I'd be damned if I let you just walk on and continue on your day to day as if you didn't just accomplish something insane, especially in this economy in 2022 and so please 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 reward yourself me uh how i rewarded myself is i bought my very first like luxury good and that is my versace bag it's this very gorgeous cute like baby blue slash like electric blue little tiny like bag and i love it so so much it was on sale for like 50 percent off um at the store on rodeo because i you know i'm a zimbabwean woman um so so i it's hard for me to spend a lot on like luxury goods but still that was a reward for me think about a reward for you either take yourself on a date take you and your family on a vacation take yourself leave the kids and everything at home go on a vacation like do something to acknowledge what you just did because if we're not acknowledging our wins like what's truly truly like what's the point of it all so yeah but don't don't go crazy though but ah go crazy now this next tip i'm going to bring my laptop out because i want to make sure i'm getting all the facts and figures correct because this next tip is to find ways to minimize your tax liability in new york city if you make one hundred thousand dollars that post tax comes out to sixty six thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars in New York City. In California, a 100K salary comes out to $68,332. This is from like deductions. Like, can you, that's almost $40,000 and like $30,000. Like, that's a lot of money. So, let's find ways to minimize our tax liability. Three ways you can do this is by maximizing on your 401k contributions, on your health savings account, and your flexible savings account. These are three things that if you contribute to regularly and like again you maximize on those benefits, it can bring your tax liability down. Meaning instead of making 66,000 post tax, you could be making up in the 70s. So that's something to really, really make sure you hone in on 401k contributions they're phenomenal for just your, the long-term benefits they provide by maxing out on your 401k contributions that means you're constantly contributing the maximum amount your employer will like match you for so for example where i work 
the company will match you at 6%, which means by taking 6% of my income monthly and putting it to my 401k contributions, my company automatically doubles it. So let's say 6% was like, I don't, I don't know how much it is. For ease, let's say 6% is $100 a month. That means if I put $100 a month to my 401k, the company I work for matched the 100k. So now instead of just having $100 in my 401k in that account, I have $200. Now, keep in mind, let's say the $100 was my 6%, you know, cut out, cut off. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna like double instead and contribute $200. The employer will still only contribute $100. But please max out on it because when you do this monthly for years, that's why people say, oh, if you start doing this at 25, you'll retire a millionaire. That's why people say that because it's it's true, y'all, like legit. So max out on your 401k and your health savings account and flexible and let's say your insurance only covers like half of your therapy bill the other half you can take from the health savings account money you can even purchase things like ibuprofen and things like that from the account and it still qualifies now the reason this is important because at first it's like mm, but like why do i need to take it from the account why can't i take it from like my own pocket the reason this is so important is because when you're taking money out of your own pocket like without the account you're taking money that's been like taxed and it's going to be taxed again when you purchase when you go through the health savings account that money hasn't been taxed so that money is worth more you know what i mean but really make sure you're maximizing on finding ways to reduce that tax liability. So that's that's number two, y'all. I'll add more information in the description below to really get into, yeah, the nitty gritty of it all. But number three, make sure that with each paycheck you get, you pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. So for me, what that looks like is before the money even hits my checking account, about 10% of it goes to my savings account. This is bi-weekly. This is because when you see the number you get in your checking, it's like, oh, this is the money I have to figure out how to continue living with for the next two weeks. You're not thinking about the money in the savings because you never even got to look at it. Now, please, 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 on this point, make sure you open a separate savings account in a whole different bank because that way, one, you're seeing that money less. Like you're like, when you open your banking apps and everything, you're not seeing the money in your savings. And that's important because for me, at least, when I see that money, I think I have it. And now I start spending like I have it. And we don't want that. We don't want to be spending like we have X amount of money. And so by me putting my money in a different savings account, now I'm able to simply look at what's in my checking and be like, oh, that's what I have. And so that's like number one. Number two, the reason you want it in a separate savings account is because if you need that money, you have to like go through like more hoops than if the money was tied to your current bank. So because my savings account is a whole different bank, I need to transfer money every time I like want money from my savings. And that takes like one to like three business days, especially if it's a weekend, that could take up to three business days, especially if you now add holidays. And um, there's also a limit on how many times you can withdraw every single month. So they really like make it so it's like, yo, like you can't just take this money out willy nilly. But with that note, make sure the savings account you choose is something that is high yield. I'll add some resources below so you can see which savings account would be the best uh, option for you. The reason I also recommend doing a separate savings account is because you earn interest on that savings account. And so like with me, I think I get like, I, I don't remember, but like the last interest payment I saw it was like $50, $60 um, for the month. That's free money I'm getting because I'm keeping my money in the savings account. You don't get that with a checking account. And so that's why it's so important to get a separate savings account. You pay yourself first. That's actually my favorite tip from the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a really great book for kind of reframing your financial mind a little bit especially if you grew up like either lower income or like low middle class the things that he explains here is very much targeted for that demographic explaining how what a lot of us grew up hearing about money and education that different frame of mind very much contributes to this person's like 
earning potential and just like net worth and so definitely recommend that book it'll be in the bio as well and then my last tip for y'all i'm sure like i know you've heard it thirty thousand times but it's so important make a budget one make a budget and for i personally kind of like recommend a month but you can shorten it to like two weeks for that time period note every single thing you spend you don't need to change your habits right away but note every single thing you spend if you bought skittles at the convenience store i want you to note it note every single thing you spend that way you can get a very clear idea of where your money goes each month it's very funny when like it's the end of the month and i'm like wait i thought i'd make six figures where the hell is my money and then i start thinking about all the things i paid for and i'm like oh oh okay okay the cool like is that spider-man meme like somebody's stealing my money and it's like who is it and it's like ah it's me like that's yeah that like spider-man meme i hope you guys know what i'm talking about like i said i recommend a month i don't really recommend two months two months would be great but like two months is just like a lot and like y'all are very busy people to be making six figures y'all you're pretty busy i presume and so please do it for one month and then after that one month then sit down and make a budget of what things you truly truly needed that you spent money on what things did you really want that you spent money on what things were an absolute waste of money an absolute waste that you did had no business spending this doesn't mean like when people hear budget it can kind of turn them off because the idea is like oh you shouldn't spend on anything fun no spend things on fun spend things on designers spend things on chilling on drinks on all the works you know like again i'm not here to tell you how to spend your money but you need to figure out for yourself what's most important to spend money on and so and again that kind of like sounds passive aggressive you need to figure out for yourself what's most important me i find eating out on weekends very important that's something that like i i tried not doing that and i didn't like it and so i have it in my budget that i will spend x amount of money like each weekend towards eating out whereas like concerts not really that important i'll like allow myself to do like two or three concerts um a year but like if it's like go to a concert or going out to eat i'll pick going out to eat maybe you're a person who really likes concerts or really likes weekend getaways figure out what your thing is and now adjust everything else around it do you need to now have like let's say a different phone plan a different wireless plan do you need to maybe not go in the office as much so that you save up on gas especially in this economy so now that you know what your true wants are the things that will help you have a nice enjoyable life and enjoy your six figures what things do we need to cut down on so that we are not screwing ourselves up in the long term you know what i mean like so not screwing ourselves over because the idea is like you know you really likely have goals you know if you're this high earner you likely have goals you likely want to buy a house at some point you want to go on vacation you want to maybe stop working and become like a digital nomad like you maybe have these certain goals for over the next three five ten years so let's not screw ourselves over but let's not have a miserable life in the meantime so track your expenses track what you spend money on and then use that to see what's most important to you what things you should cut away trim the fat a little bit and then go from there wow that those are really bad scissors was that me doing scissors trim the fat trim the fat wow anyway so there you go everybody my four insights tips just thoughts on the things you need to do once you get that six figure income of course these things are things you should also do before the six figure income but a lot of times people like i hate it and people like oh you should be budgeting and someone's making like 40k it's like yo i'm focused on like making it to next week and two weeks from now with this paycheck so like get away with with that get away from me with that you know what i mean but at 100k hopefully we're at a better place where we can have a little bit more flexibility with what we choose to spend our money on but there we go everybody i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give me a like below i'm really glad that we're talking about this because i like talking about money and career and just goals so thank you so much and i'll talk to y'all later Bye.